Would you like to do a podcast ad spot exchange? Hit me up at frankietees at substack.com. Grab some show merch and support my work on Colts through 2024. New digital original drawings by me are related to surviving a cult or sunshine positivity and reggae. Find the link at frankietees.substack.com and look for the word tees, T-E-E-S. You're listening to The Frankie Files, frankiefilespodcast.com. Trigger warning. Some people may find topics discussed in this episode difficult. Please proceed with caution. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 86 of Frankie Files Podcast. I'm Frankie Tease. And since I started doing my show, it's been a constant battle. As the ground disappears underneath me, I continue to run. I would explain it like that. (laughs) On that note, we're starting with episode 86 here. So quick note that we're going to be picking up with chapter 6 this week. I left off with chapter 5 last week, and I misspoke on 4. Okay, so this week we're heading right into 6 and 7. If you need to put it on pause and read the book, do so. That is available at Kathy O'Brien's website, trans-formation.com. That is the link to use, and that is a very important request from Kathy, okay? She talks about that information is manipulated in all types of forms, misinformation woven in to her original story. She's been dealing with this, and she's been doing this for 30 years, and she does want her real story to get out. So please heed the links, catch up on Transformation, True Story of a Mind Control Slave, the book, and then come back and hit play. Spoiler alert. Now, you know that she was taken away from Wayne Cox in the last one because he's too crazy. The notes disappeared. (laughs) And I really can't explain how that happened as I've written many a script. So I'm going to take my highlights from reading Trance Formation of America, the true life story of a mind control slave. In chapter six, we're going forward with more mind control shocking, but more levels, okay, of numbing a person. And I wanted to make a note that there are several inserts between part one and part two, and I really didn't cover that before, but in them there is some very, very pertinent, before we get to chapter six, there's some really pertinent information. Some of that, these inserts, I had highlighted Because I talked about being shocked about the cult recovery industry, which is kind of like, oh, why do adults go to cults? Why don't you go to a psychologist? I know a good one. Have you read the other psychology books? It's like all psychology. Well, knowing what I know about psychology and the sordid roots, it's not all effective. I understand that gets a lot of resistance. This shows about solutions for adult children of cults. We have a very rough time sitting in front of people doing a forced confession because that was some of our torture and mind control, psychological abuse. And I'm one of those people. So this is really an amazing thing to find Kathy's book, which was highly, you know, censored out of my life, even though I've done Google searches to find something like this. But in her book, which I'm cheating, I'm reading ahead, PTSD, Time to Heal. Well, the techniques given there are amazing. And I've started on these. And it requires carrying a book with you wherever you are to jot down notes as they come up, even if it's an abbreviation of what came up. And the most important thing is that when you use your own pen and you write it down, it transfers your memory from the emotional to the logical part of the brain. When you record it like that, then you have recorded something that's deep in your subconscious, perhaps that wasn't available to you before. Due to this technique, there's no interference with the memory, such as a psychologist or friend saying, well, how did that make you feel? Or what else was going on at the time? Or asking interruptive questions. It's a quiet process. She calls it memory work. 
And she's actually with Mark Phillips taught people around the world in psychology industry how to help people using these methods. Someone that actually wants to help people, not just take their dime. And of course, the psych industry is really good at that, just like cults. And that's what one of my complaints. Now, in this process of trying to heal, you know, Mark takes her to Alaska, try to get to a quiet place to heal. And it's a horrible process as she's running from ownership by a senator. <laughs> Unusual? Yeah. So the people that they go to in Alaska, it's a process of getting documentation of Kathy's abuse, which is documented. And he's horrified and she's relieved at the results. She's got proof. And she was just thinking she'd be stonewalled because she knows the power and the connections of the government. It's everywhere. Now, they also got documentation for her daughter, Kelly. In the whole process, he was trying to get information on how to deprogram Kathy from literally mind enslavement, using her brain as memory holes for, you name it, secrets. A baseball library was in there. They, they kept whatever they wanted, traumatizing her to open up compartments of the brain, sealing in information, and then re-traumatizing it in, either through electrocution or sacrifice. So it's pretty crazy. And yet she has boiled it down into very logical sequential statements of what their technique is. During this process, they're visited by multiple people. And one of them in Alaska, and I'll quote from the book, Transformation of America, a well-known alleged mind control taught Mooney that the CIA sent in on Mark and Kathy in 1989 by UCLA's CIA Dr. Jolyn West, MD, and Cult Awareness Network founder, Margaret Singer, MD. And then his um, information is listed. And what Mark was saying is that they had a really bad time with this person tried to re-traumatize Kathy. The techniques used were unethical. It is hard to recover when you find that, as Mark Phillips said, one of the few people in the world I've ever heard say all the things they're saying, but the fact that this information has been kept from us so that we can't heal because mind control, it, it works in their favor. And as Mark says in early on in the book, could it be that the U.S. government is doing secret research using cult leaders and that they are complicit with what goes on. Well, I'm saying, well, my goodness, yes. Look at all that goes on in the United States. The first thing they did when they sent cult leader Nexium to jail, to prison, is to obtain the technology. This is very important to the CIA, <laughs> you know, at what cost? You want to sacrifice humanity to save it? So now as a presidential model, Kathy is going through so much more. Not only has she survived these impregnations and ritual abuse, knowing that those could have been children. She survived all of this. She survived traversing on regular appointments to NASA to get brain tune-ups and trauma opening new compartments in the brain for storage. Some highlights, opening chapter six, Alex Houston seemed only to pick up where Cox had left off as destined Kelly and I moved into a rundown old trailer on Houston's property. And then she tells us how she's sleep deprived, water deprived, food deprived, financially deprived at all times. That is the slave formula. You can't think to go and you have no resources to go anywhere. Cox had her in the jungle for three years in the swamp in Louisiana. The torture didn't stop. Houston picks up and this is a person that works still for her uh, ultimate owner, Senator Byrd, United States Senator and then Majority Leader. Alex Houston is in the country music business. His business is ventriloquist and performer. She's now on another circuit where they traffic cocaine as well. Alex Houston 
is 26 years older than her. He was famous for USO tours, the Bob Hep USO tours. So there was some trafficking of this whole program, MK Ultra, going on there. Earlier, she had described Bird is also involved in the country music business by owning performers. And that's how he gets paid. He makes them perform and they have nothing. Part of the ownership he had was the Mandrell sisters, three of them. You're listening to The Frankie Files, frankiefilespodcast.com. She had a reaction to save her and her daughter. She's got little Kelly, who's only three months old. So she, out of panic, runs to her mother and father. They immediately return her to Bird, who's also very sadistic, and she's realizing what she's in for. And upon doing so, feels she has to be re-tortured, is set back, separated from her daughter, can't even imagine it, separated from her daughter and sent back to the hellhole that is Wayne Cox property. Three more months of total torture. Then she's brought back and starts her new life. Dealing with the fight or flight, that was disabled. So whatever will had been destroyed, then she had her daughter and the maternal instinct flared up. They wanted to stamp that out too because she needs to be a good, receivable, robotic mechanism is the words I would use. After the three months in the swamp, she had no idea what her name was or how old she was. She was that wiped out mentally. And she talks about how the visits to NASA for, quote, training picked up where her father used to take her to those. Now, her new men take her. She meets Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino, who becomes a horrific part of her life. He has top secret clearance in Defense Intelligence Agency Psychological Warfare Division, a.k.a. PSYOPs. He's a professed neo-Nazi. He's the founder of the Himmler-inspired Satanic Temple of Set and has been charged with child ritual and sexual abuse at the Presidio Daycare in San Francisco, California. But like her father, Cox, and Aquino, remain above the law for reasons of national security. She is now taken to new programming. Whereas Cox was using the mental programming of satanic ritual abuse, very traumatized, and occultism and Mormonism, as well as Satanism and rituals that his mother had taught him she's a witch. This was all combined into the rhetoric and programming she was getting there. Now, Aquino, he still used the blood trauma, but also he used a very high-tech style, no witch craft. She was programmed for sadistic sex and to be a drug mule and to do prostitute operations. Sadly, a heinous baphomet was carved into the flesh of her vagina. And they thought that was something they could show off to everyone. True crime much? There's a mock wedding, but... Even though she's not technically married to Bird, that's who she belongs to. The dress is used in porn and famous. Alex Houston was who she was, quote, married to now. The man who does ventriloquism in the country music business. Strange as it sounds. Part of what they did was make sure that he did performances near where she needed to be for mind control, training, and programming. She was often picked up at rendezvous locations and helicoptered in to the White House or the Pentagon. Whatever happened there was locked into her memory with electrocution and trauma. So she thought during that time she was just traveling in the country music industry. Now, what's important, because I'm reading PTSD, is that she says that subconscious suppression and memory suppression appears as missing time. I have so much of it. I'm working on this. Kathy says mind control was fast, effective, and highly technical, but it was NASA programming that launched her as a presidential model. Access to NASA allowed him to use mind foolers like sensory deprivation tanks, virtual reality flight simulators, and harmonics. Kelly was already subjected to Aquino and his programming through the latest technological advancement, which shattered her fragile young mind before age two. 
Some of the techniques Aquino used to traumatize her are sexual assaults, high voltage torture of the mind and body. Kelly and Kathy still have the scars of the numerous non-satanic abuses. He used that combined with Project Monarch standards, food deprivation, sleep deprivation, water deprivation, and high voltage. Kelly was subject to state-of-the-art, genetically multi-generational, multiple personality disorder, psychological mind control engineering. It's important to note the money. Senator Byrd was on the Appropriations Committee, and that determined how much and or whether NASA received government funding. He would order sessions or jump in to programming sessions. He custom ordered how he wanted Kathy to be programmed by Aquino at a military facility. She reveals that NASA was involved in making films. Two were famous. One, How to Divide a Personality, and the second film, How to Create a Sex Slave. They have the purpose of scrambling memory and documenting their mind control procedures. Some resident Huntsville, Alabama pornographers helped make it happen. Now, she talks about how to create a sex slave, the film, depicting a spin programming. Basically, she's going to describe it to us, and I'm going to read that now. The compartment of mind that holds memory of, now again, this is not for kids. If you had kids in the area, please clear the area or listen from this point forward later. The compartment of the mind that holds memory of incest is stimulated to open when the original abuse is imminent. Her father's penis would trigger a specific response, supposedly opening the neuron pathways, she says, of her brain to allow the part of her brain, quote, that dealt with the actions before to deal with them again. Quote, with spin programming, the trigger of seeing my father's penis is replaced with a combination of specific verbal commands and a specific number of physical spins so that anyone with the combination could access that particular part of my brain. Part of my mind, she continues, containing knowledge of the original abuse by my father learned to, quote, like painful, sadistic sex. Senator Byrd wanted me programmed in such a way that he could decide if he wanted me to scream or cry when he whipped me. This is one example of sex programming. And she says, I was programmed for more than sex. But this particular incident of programming at the U.S. Army Redstone Arsenal would change my existence entirely and set the stage for my role in covert government black budget type operations as a, quote, presidential model. This episode is brought to you by my Teespring store. Just find the link at frankietees.substack.com and look for the word tees, T-E-E-S. I'm now on Teespring and Printify. There you'll find the links. Grab some show merch and support my work on Colts through 2024. New digital original drawings by me are related to surviving a cult or sunshine positivity and reggae with some whimsy thrown in for good measure see frankie t's on tiktok and follow the free coloring download project too it's survivor therapy so yeah get a tea from frankie t's t-e-e-s now about the specifics much of the wizard of oz lends itself to themes commonly used by perpetrators she says for example nearly all Multiple personality disorder, disassociative identity disorders have suffered the loss of pets during ritualized torture. And all of Baum's primary character, nightmarish experience over the rainbow in Oz, stemmed from her desire to risk her own life to protect her threatened pet. Abusers use this lesson to condition the victim to drop all resistance and cooperate. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, or child, too. 
The Over the Rainbow Scramble of Dream versus Reality provides abusers a theme by which to manipulate a multiple personality disorder's perception of switching personalities. In other words, they lie to them and tell them that something else is happening. She says, oftentimes this theme is transdimensional, as is Oz, or that which was just experienced was just a bad dream, like Dorothy was told upon her awakening in her own bed back in Kansas. Having some flashbacks right now. (laughs) That is so universal. It was just a bad dream. Oh, you were having a vision. It was a hallucination. She also says that many CIA covert operations she was involved in appeared in public, right in front of everyone. Moving to chapter seven, she introduces us to charm school. What a terrible place. This hellhole involved everything you can imagine in torture, including animals. One of the members of the Mellon banking family was its operator. They contributed to Senator Byrd's endowment for the arts. There's the money train. Kathy describes how many people are in on the charm school operation, just alone. All the local authorities help make it happen, etc. Quote, once the door closed behind me, charm school meant I would be charmed, mesmerized, hypnotized, and programmed to be a high-class prostitute for select politicians. I did learn their way to walk. I learned when to talk, how to dress, how to sit, stand, and all the rest. Table manners weren't taught as they were not needed since slaves endured food and water deprivation when working. Above all, we were taught how to gratify any sexual perversion. To continue a typical three-day course at charm school included the usual factors of sleep, food, and water deprivation, trauma, high voltage, and programming, oftentimes experimental or tried and proven CIA-manufactured designer drugs were administered, which produced specific brainwave activities to minimize or compartmentalize programs. She says, I usually spent the first day hanging in the dungeon. Oh my. As she hung by her wrist, she said, I could hear and smell the animals in the next cell, a black Nubian goat called Satan, a small donkey named Nestor, sometimes a small white pony referred to as Trigger, and various dogs, cats, snakes, and others. She says, I was hung by my ankle, stretched on a rack, burned and tortured repeatedly. My feet and hands were chained to a wall for what was termed off the wall sex. Uh I was taught silence in Oz fashion since screaming did not produce results anyway unless they wanted it for pornography. This was implemented with an electronic canine bark collar normally used to train a dog not to bark. Kelly and Kathy were forced to see each other physically tortured as further psychological trauma. This was to ensure, she says, I could never remember the who, what, when, or where of our bizarre enslavement. This is what is sometimes referred to as cross-programming. As torturing her, her owner, Senator Bird, would say, there's no place for you to turn to because if you could think to talk, no one would ever believe I would have anything to do with the likes of you. And he often threatened me, she says, that I was considered disposable because after all, the first presidential model, Marilyn Monroe, was killed right in front of the public eye and no one knew what happened. I think we all know about menticide If you're an adult child of a cult, you experience the belittling that hollows you out. Menticide. Senator Byrd believed his own madness that mind control, quote, atrocities are a means of thrusting mankind into an accelerated evolution according to neo-Nazi principles to which he adhered. And he continued with his beliefs, sounding off on her because he didn't think she would live to say He justified manipulating mankind's religion to bring about the prophetic biblical world peace through the only means available, total mind control in the new world order. After all, he proclaimed, even the Pope and Mormon prophet know this is the only way to peace and they cooperate fully with the project. 
Kelsey informs us about another black location, the Swiss Villa Amphitheater in Lamp, Missouri. She was programmed there. It's a CIA near-death trauma center of which there are several across the country. Oh, man. It houses the government CIA cocaine and heroin distribution operations at that time. And this book was published in 1995. The Swiss Villa, again, that was in Missouri, is like Mount Shasta, California compound. It is used as a, quote, training and operations camp for the shadow government paramilitary projects referred to by Senator Inouye. And she says, I learned that this not so secret military buildup sanctioned by corrupt members of our government consisted of special forces, robotic soldiers, numerous black unmarked helicopters, and the highest technological advancements in top secret weaponry and highlighter here, Star Wars electromagnetic mind control equipment. Okay, repeat, U.S. government CIA black location, Swiss Villa in Missouri, had in 95 Star Wars electromagnetic mind control equipment. Continuing from the book, these paramilitary compounds were intended for global policing of the New World Order through the multi-jurisdictional police force. She must be busy right now. One of the things that took place at this location for her was being chased while naked with guns. When they chase you like an animal, you're hunted, you're beaten and raped and traumatized and programmed again because when they're traumatizing you, new compartments are open. Hey, getting two things done at once, so efficient. It's called the most dangerous game. And she says that if the hunters couldn't catch the slave, then the black helicopters patrolling the area would. And if all else failed, the eye in the sky would locate him or her and torturous death would supposedly be imminent. She says, Mark Phillips and I are determined to beat them at their own game by arming the 95% with the truth that perpetrators don't want them to know. You sure are. Chapter 8 will be for next week. Thank you for listening to Frankie Files podcast. And always, keep critical thinking. You're listening to The Frankie Files. FrankieFilesPodcast.com Can you take a minute to like, share, rate, and follow the show where you listen? Especially on Spotify and Apple. We're on Google, Pandora, YouTube, Acast, and all other apps with the RSS feed. You can also donate to the free show via PayPal. The link is in the show notes. You're listening to The Frankie Files. FrankieFilesPodcast.com Grab some show merch and support my work on Colts through 2024. New digital original drawings by me are related to surviving a cult or sunshine positivity and reggae. Find the link at frankietees.substack.com and look for the word tease. T-E-E-S.